Hello, welcome back. So, hopefully you watched the how to throw a continuous curve bowl demonstration on the other video. This is how to trim that continuous bowl, continuous curved bowl uh, that I threw in the video yesterday. It's now leather hard and ready to trim. Here it is. This is the second one I did in the demo, the one I did not cut in half. You notice that it's sitting upside down on my wheel. I flipped it over about halfway through the drying process, as soon as, as it was firm enough to do so. So when it started to get leather hard up in the top here, I flipped it over. I want to show you first how to flip it over without messing it up too much. So if it's upside down, let's put it right side up. If I went to grab it, I might be able to do that but you can flip it without touching it. Use two boards, two bats. One on top of the other, it's like a cake. Put your hand on either board or either bat. Flip it all at once. If you have really big stuff, you have to take a leap of faith and just do it. It works great every time. So now it's right side up. Put this aside and let's look at it a little bit to remind us what it was like. So this is that bowl with the continuous curve on the inside. And it's got lots of extra clay down here. And that's what we're gonna to trim today. And so I'm gonna put it back on the wheel here and show you a few things before I get it set to trim. It's firm enough that I can lift it up now. I don't need to use those boards. I just wanted to show you that. Leather hard, meaning it still has some give to it. If I push on it with my thumb, I can make a mark but it's firm enough to hold its shape. It's no longer sticky at all. So that's when you know you're ready. If it's so firm that you can't make a mark when you push on it with your thumb, then uh, you've gone too far. You might need to re-moisturize it. Holding it, I can get a feel for where the thickness is. I can just pinch the wall. So I'm pinching inside and outside. The wall is actually thinnest in the middle. It thickens up a little bit up here, which is not a bad thing. It makes the bowl strong. Just slightly and then it's pretty even and then right here it's just extra extra thick I'm also going to visually look and try to remember the curve what it looks like in there because when I trim it that's going to be my guide the inside negative space becomes my guide for the outside trim form some of its visual some of it is kind of physical that you can check so we'll do both so I'm getting a feel for it and I'm getting a visual record. Uh, another trick is that you can measure how thick the floor is. If you have a hard time telling how thick the bottom is, you can use uh, any kind of stick, something flat. Put it across, take another stick. I'm gonna use this one with a nice soft round bottom. Put it here and I'm gonna look until I reach the bottom of my bowl. Then I'm going to hold these two together, pull it out, come over here, and you can see, I'll scoot it back a little bit, that that is how thick the floor is, about one finger's thickness. Maybe not as thick as I sometimes leave for bowls, so I don't have too much to trim on the very bottom. I have most of the trim inward. That's where my extra clay is, not on the very, very bottom. So that's a good uh, trick. You know, you can write that down or measure it and things, but uh, I think it's best to just do it, get a visual record, and then do it by feel. You'll get better and better as you do things like that. So here we are, right side up. I could flip it over, put it on this bat here, put some clay down, hold it, and trim it, just like you would any of the other forms that we've trimmed this semester, like your cups, you know me, forms, tea bowls, those type of things. But with a wide form, a foam bat is a good way to go. So I'm going to actually take this off the wheel for a moment. Take this regular bat off. I don't need that. This bat has pins as well. And I'm going to put this onto the wheel head. A little trickier to get on because you can't see the holes. They're hidden. Okay, I'm in there. And then now, I could flip this over. If I needed to do the, the whole cake flip thing, you could do that with the foam bat too, and then put the whole thing on the wheel. In this case, this is fine. 
This, you can probably see them, there's some rings drawn onto the foam. That's a good start, but it may not be perfectly centered. You gotta test it. So I'm ready to spin my wheel and get this bowl centered. And you'll see how the foam bat works while I do this. So I'm spinning the wheel slowly. If you might remember, um, I'll often have students, uh, I don't even have one handy, I'll use a knife, use a needle tool and go in until it scratches. Instead of a needle tool, I use my, my pinky nail. So I just kind of turn my hand upside down and that's a scratcher always on your hand. So I'm going inward until I contact and then I stop going inward and I go around a few rounds. And you see here that I left a scratch I went to about here. That means that I can face that scratch towards me and lift it up and just scoot it towards the middle of the wheel a little bit and then take another attempt here, maybe a little bit higher. And I didn't quite get it, so I have a new scratch here. So let's move that over a little bit. One more time. We're getting there. Now, I may not have thrown it perfectly centered, and so if I try to get this dead even, I might be here all day and never get it. So a good test is to come up to the top, make a ring at the top, look down, and look to see if that ring is centered. And it is, so that's good. Uh, I have this on the back with the foam on it and no clay holding it down. That's because the foam grips it. So once I'm there, all goes well it stays put through the whole turning process so that's one of the advantages to the foam bat the other advantage to the foam bat is that it's really soft on the rim of your bowl or <laughs> and if you have any kind of irregularity on the top it can snug into the foam and you won't be rocking around and it won't damage your rim so that's good the disadvantage is, is that you can't like slide it to center so I had to lift it up a little bit to get it centered and so once I'm happy with where it's at it's gonna stay right there the tool I'm going to use to trim is this one here. You may have one in your kit that looks like this. It's the same shape, just a different brand. I have another side to this one. I may end up using that, but I could probably do the whole thing here. So I have my tool. I have my leather hard bowl upside down, centered on a foam bat. I'm ready to trim. I have a mental idea of where the thick clay is, what the inside curve is like, Upside down, that curve has now become a dome. So that's how I'm going to approach that mentally. But before I do anything, let's look at a couple finished bowls as examples. It's good to know what the uh, you know guidelines are for a foot that matches a bowl nicely. So if we look at maybe a couple of the bowls that I showed you in the first video, this is the Saudi Shapiro mixing bowl, his foot has a little bit of an outward flare to it. That makes it really nice to grip. I actually use that a lot when I'm washing it and cleaning it and things like that. And then it's real simple. He didn't trim a lot from the underside, which actually gave it a little bit of weight on the bottom. For a mixing bowl, that's good. It makes it really stable. For another type of bowl, that might be an unpleasant weight. This one's great. Another simple continuous curved bowl, Gary Holt, took a little different approach trim more out of there and has not a flared foot going this direction but a beveled foot and there's several bevels to it this full foot pitches inwards a little bit then there's a bevel on the corner so you don't get a sharp corner and there's one even on the inside too so a chamfered edge on both sides of the foot ring good example and then one more here it is Lindsay Oh boy, I'm forgetting her last name. It starts with an O. I should know because I bought her piece. This beautiful uh, bowl, wood fired. Um, I'll put it in the comments. Her name. She has a real bevel to the whole foot. It comes in quite a bit. And it uh, matches this kind of uh, industrial quality of the form that she made. Contrasts nicely with the firing and the surface and the foot matched up with that. So there's a good, simple example. 
So those are some examples for me to keep in mind as I trim this bowl and we'll see what I end up with. The trimming rules are the same as what you learn when you're trimming your bowl. You want to hold the tool at three or four o'clock. The same place where you pull the wall up when you're pulling a, a cylinder or a bowl. And I like to keep one hand resting on top. I'm not pressing very hard here. It's just gliding on the surface. That becomes an anchor for me to anchor into. It also gives you an extra insurance. If something goes wrong and a tool catches, you can actually keep your piece from flying off the wheel. Whether you're using clay or using the foam, it's maybe even more important with the foam. Although the foam grips pretty good. So I'm gonna hold this tool firmly and I hold it in my hand like that. So I have a real good grip. You know, some people might hold it like a, a hammer. That's okay. Sometimes you can hold it like a pencil, right? But that wouldn't be quite strong enough for this big bowl and this uh, first aggressive uh, trimming move that I'm gonna do. So I hold it like that where it's really supported in my hand. Elbows in, I'm gonna hold myself really steady, all that stuff. So here we go. I'm gonna come down and that's where I had all that extra clay, right? And I hopefully will get a nice ribbon coming off and let's see. So when the clay comes off in ribbons, it's the right consistency for trimming. That's the perfect leather hard stage. If it comes off in little chips, way too dry. If it sticks to the pot as you're trimming it, too wet. And you might distort it, it's so soft, it won't work well. So we're in good shape. That was a first round and I'm simply cleaning up and removing in the area where I know I have the most clay. So let's do more. I use the broad side of the tool to remove quite a bit. The wheel speed does not need to be going extremely fast, but don't go extremely slow either. You really aren't trimming. Ooh, I just caught a little bit. You know what happened was a piece of this hit my anchor hand and it caused my tool to jump a little bit. And then when that happens, if you jump, what you wanna do is just stabilize and go several rounds and stabilizing to try to get rid of that little bump that I actually trimmed in when I, I messed up. And, but if I hold real stable, I can go around. Okay, so I've brought the diameter of the foot in a, quite a bit. I still have a lot of clay here and now I'm gonna think about that curve, the inside curve. So this is pretty straight right now right? Inside of that bowl was a nice continuous curve. This should be a mound. So lots of clay to remove here. I'm happy with the width that I've trimmed the very bottom to, or in this case, it's the top while we trim, but it's the bottom of the pot. So I'm going to work on this area now. I do that before I get to the cutting out of the foot ring. Here we go. Now, here's the question that I need to ask myself. How far down should I trim into the bowl? That's why I felt the wall of the bowl. You're gonna trim more of a wall on a bowl than you will on a lot of other pottery forms that are based on cylinders. Usually it's, it's not the best idea to trim into the wall of a cylinder-based piece. It is a good idea to do it on bowls when you've left the extra clay to support the curve. So, I need to base that on each individual piece about how far to trim down. I know that the extra clay on this one was at the bottom. It wasn't in the middle. I don't need to trim this at all. And as I come up to where the foot itself is going to be, I can start to think about what I want, whether it's that flared out foot that goes that way or if I'm gonna keep it tucked in. I can kind of decide a little bit later if I don't trim too much there. And so I can really work at this area where I knew I had extra and start to create a foot. My way of doing this is uh, I, I really just focus on trimming the extra clay off first, getting the proportions. 
then I feel out the exact uh, design of the foot. But I also try to think about what the bowl looks like inside and the style of it and things like that for how the foot might uh, match. If it's extremely simple without a lot of uh, throwing lines, then I'll try to make a real simple foot. If there's a lot of slip and throwing lines and maybe rib marks going on, then maybe minimizing the foot a little bit is not a bad idea. So now you're seeing that it's starting to get to be more of a, of a mound as opposed to just a straight line here. I still have a little ways to go, but the foot is starting to appear in this direction too. So I can kind of see it taking place. I will keep a tapered in foot on this one, I've decided. So I feel pretty good about that. I know there's still a little bit of extra right here, but I can kind of finish that up later. I have my foot pretty much started and the proportions are good. I must clean it up just a little bit. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch to the pencil grip. And the pencil grip helps me for the very top. So I can hold this like that. And I'm, there was some irregularity on the very top of it, which is common when you cut your wire through there and all that. So I'm gonna start by, by removing that. But I'm not removing much clay. I'm just kind of gliding on the surface. That's why I like this broad tool. I'm, I'm using that like that, right on the top, just to clean it up. And I haven't even taken anything out of the middle. That'll help me to leave that until I really need to remove it because that was my reference. Remember when I did the two sticks? I know the bottom's about that thick. If I trim all that now, I'll lose that reference. But I have a second reference, which is this curve. It's gonna continue in there as well. So I have two ways to visually sense how thick the floor is. Now I'm going to start removing some clay from the underside to create the foot ring. I got some out there. And now I'm gonna turn the tool over and I'll use this round side of that big big one. And that works good for, for hogging out some clay. Some students will use their little one. Look at that, nice. A little trimming tool can be something that works for this too. I prefer bigger ones. There's actually all different styles of trimming tools as well. There's uh, some Japanese style trimming tools that are not loops. You may have seen those. They look like a hacksaw blade bent into an L shape. Those, uh, those can work as well. So I'm gonna do one thing. I'm my own cameraman here. So I'm gonna try to lift the uh, camera a little bit so you can see inside. Try that. Okay, hopefully that'll be a little bit. Yeah, you guys can see that now. I left the, the middle untrimmed, but I trimmed a lot out from in here. Now I can think about where this and this meet so that mound is continuous into the bottom side. More trimming. Trimming right at three o'clock right now. So my trimming uh, area changes a little bit with the part of the piece that I'm trimming. I trim at four o'clock over here and then I come over here and trim at three. Don't trim up here though, up at like one or two o'clock. Your tool will catch like that. There's some exceptions to that, which I'll show you probably at the very end. 
Uh, okay, so I'm feeling pretty good. I need, now I'm going to remove that middle. I'm gonna flip this over. So I'm losing my reference for how thick it is, but I'm thinking about it. Thinking about that one finger's thickness. I don't want to overdo it. But I do want to trim the middle because if you don't, and if you start trimming this, this might be the high point and then you have a real problem. And so I have not trimmed much off of the foot ring. And if I continue to trim from the underside, then I'm guaranteed for that foot ring to uh, be the one that contacts the table. But we'll test that when we're done. Okay, so I'm getting to the point now where I need to pay attention to how thick that floor is. I've talked a lot about the visual reference, so mound continues in there. Some people tap. Yeah, that's not bad. I can hear it a little bit like a drum, so that helps in some ways. I'm not a big tapper myself. Instead, what I do is I do it by feel. So I just pushed on it a little bit, and it, it has a little give to it. So that's, that's how I do it. It depends on how firm your clay is. So you have to kind of take that into account. My clay is uh, maybe on the soft side. The, the, I like to trim when it's not real hard leather hard. Um, it's just so much faster and nicer to trim. You get a cleaner line in the end and um, it doesn't dull, dull your tools. It's just a much nicer experience to trim on the soft side for me. The danger is your tool can catch a little easier if something goes wrong. Um, but it gives me a sense of the give. So. It's got a little give, like a trampoline, when I push on it, and so I'm good. I like the the uh, thickness that I've created there. Visually, I should see those two things line up. They're not quite there, so I can trim a little bit more right in there. So I'm going to get in here, and then I'm going to finish my foot ring, which I have a lot to work with. Okay, I'm going to use the other side. This is why I have this angle on my trimming tool. You could do it with any small trimming tool. And this is where I break the rule. I actually do come up here to like one o'clock to trim the inside of the foot ring. So my hand goes over here for insurance and I just come over here and, and trim that because there was some unsightly rings and marks. Now I can turn this and this also is a great angle for me to clean up that corner. All right, kept that one pretty good. Look at how thick my foot ring is. I kept it that way till the end. So I'm going to uh, make a foot that's similar to that Gary Holt bowl that I showed you. It'll have a, a, a chamfer on each side. So first thing, let me see if I need to trim down the foot it, ring itself a little bit. I do. This is the hardest thing to trim, to be honest, is straight down. You have to hold really steady with light pressure and a firm hand and go several rotations so you don't dig in, especially on soft clay. That's better. And now I'm gonna bevel the inside corner. Now I have a lot of clay to work with here. I'm gonna remove quite a bit. I have a divot there too. So I'm gonna hold really steady back at my four o'clock position. And you see my hand here is supporting. Stop the wheel and get rid of that stuff when I feel like it's a problem. So now I have a decision to make. I have quite a strong foot here. It's pretty big, but I've narrowed it up at this point and I've got a strong point here. I kind of like it. I think I'm going to bring it down just a little bit and try to leave this line there where the form changes from the curve to the foot. This is what I was talking about where I kind of feel it out. I don't have a set design in mind necessarily on everything. Sometimes I do on, on feet, but trimming's fun to go with the process a bit sometimes. And um, I like that sense that it, that foot has. I'm just gonna come over here and chamfer that edge And I can use my fingertips for fine, fine tuning on the foot. 
good enough. There's some little bits in there. We're not going to worry about them. Okay, cool. So now the last thing I'm going to do, I feel good about the foot and the thickness and everything. I can go back and revisit this area here. I think I can remove a little bit more right there and maybe have a little bit more of a curve meeting that flat foot. This is subtle and it'll make that even more prominent. And now I'm going to roll my tool kind of quickly. Make one little squeaky noise. That means stop. <laughs> if, it, if your tool's squeaking on the uh, pots when you're trimming them, it, there's probably a dull tool, which is one's pretty sharp. Or your angle of your tool is weird, or the clay has gotten pretty firm, and, and it just said, okay, that's enough. The reason why I went kind of fast there and rolled in is because I don't like small trimming lines. I want the subtle lines that are left by the tool to be wide. It just flows a little better for me. It doesn't look mechanical. It looks um, like it has some gesture that matches maybe what I put in when I threw. Maybe not. We will see. Okay, so now what? I think I'm kind of done. Let's take a look. This is firm enough that I can gently flip it over. So the first thing is that I should feel lighter, right? What's the point of trimming? Well, one point is to, to thin it out. Feels good. Uh, I'm gonna put it on a more stable bat. I'm gonna look in there and you know I was pushing on the bottom like a trampoline. I said I actually pushed it in just a tiny bit. And I'm gonna gently, gently push it back ever so slightly because I lost my perfect curve. It had a good curve on it and it's back. The clay remembers. So that was like that in the middle. I just went like that. I mean, it's so subtle. Uh, so that's back to the curve, but now we're looking at that. And you know, that's a fine foot for my purposes. I think the angle could be a little bit better. The angle of the foot, I think is too similar to the angle of this. This is a critique I'm giving myself now, uh, but let's uh, stick with it. It's got a substantial foot. It's got a lot of weight in the foot itself. And so let's show you the foot so you can see better. So there's like the mound that I'm talking about. And then the foot ring is really strong, big one sticking right on there. And so that's what I came up with. No square corners on the feet. They're beveled, chamfered, whatever you want to call it. Let's cut it in half and look at it. So just like when I threw the first bowl on the first video, we wanted to see the cross section. We trimmed the bowl. We should look at the cross section. I'm going to turn off my wheel so nothing crazy happens. I'm using an X-Acto knife here and I'm going to use the guides of these and go to the middle of my bowl here. It's hard to cut leather hard stuff with a wire. Much easier with a knife, especially a really sharp knife like an X-Acto knife. Oops, it's not going very straight here. So back to the continuous bowl curve, continuous curve talk. You, now you can really see it on the inside of the bowl, I hope. There we go. So they remember that chain that I drafted? There it is. And then under here is where I trimmed. And there's the foot. I said I had a lot of weight in the foot. That's up there and right there. And that's not bad. It gave it some stability. And so uh, let's see here. I trimmed a little extra there and I could have trimmed more there. Kind of felt that way. So that's, that's not the greatest. It's thin, thick, but it's not um, thicker on the bottom. If you leave your bottom thicker, it's high chance of cracking down there. So that's a good thickness for the bottom. It's got a, a pretty uh, sturdy wall on this bowl and uh, it would have been fine. Could be better, could be more even. The foot is really strong, big. I kind of like the visual side of that and there was no problem if I had kept this bowl. Uh, but for now, I have two halves of bowls. Maybe I'll do something with them. 
So I think I'm going to sit down and recap what we did. So yesterday I threw continuous curved bolts. Today I trimmed the second bolt that I threw. And I used a foam bat as opposed to putting it straight on the wheel head. Don't need any clay to hold it down. It never flew off. It, was, it worked really great. But you can also just use the clay, like regular trimming, that's fine. And um, I really paid attention to the visual references of the curve. It was on the inside, I had to think about it in the opposite as I trimmed. And I also took some measurements with a couple sticks and that proved handy to know how thick the bottom was. And then I did it by feel a little bit, also tapping is, a, is another way to do it. And um, we cut it in half and looked in there and there was some a little bit of thin spot and a little bit of thicker spots, but it would have been a fine bowl had I kept it. So I hope that's helpful for you for trimming a continuous curved bowl, and I will see you on another video. Thanks.